Hey traders, TG Watkins here, and it is June 9th uh, when I'm recording this, so Thursday. And uh, yeah, we finally got some action in the market today. So we're going to go through that and talk about it and uh, show you some interesting things that I've been capturing and posting and uh, basically tracking of what's been happening. So not too unexpected what happened today. All right. Um, also keep in mind that we have CPI tomorrow, Friday, but uh, you guys will be seeing this after we see the CPI number. So we'll have information about that. Uh, again, I had a bear market market update. So if you guys want to look into that and see how that looks, come over here to profitpilot.com. And from there, we can dive into the market. So today we have this happening today. Finally, we got a little bit of price breaking out of the range. It did move to the downside, which is something that I talked about yesterday when you guys saw the little uh, you know, intro into this video. And I said, don't be surprised if we actually get price to move down. And that's exactly what happened today. You can see here the Moxie indicator was just looking negative the entire nine days and finally just started breaking to the downside. Now, if things were going to be to the upside, you know, then we wanted to see price engage with the moving average to the upside. It never did. And instead, what it did is basically engaged with the moving average to the downside and continued to roll over. Now, Anything goes in this market, okay? Things are all over the place. They're crazy. They're bouncy. They are erratic. So this could be a sell-off into the CPI number, the inflation numbers. And I would not be surprised. I, I don't know if it's going to happen, but I would not be surprised if uh, the CPI numbers come in less bad and that causes the market to bounce. So just putting it out there as an option for way things can happen. The other reason I'm putting it out there is because if we look here, and actually, let me. So if we look here, and I have this from a screenshot from Thinkorswim just for the moment, but if we look here, I have had trend lines drawn like this since May 25th, since basically we hammered out a, a bottom right in through here. And what we can see is we now have price coming back to this lower trend line. It's got a little ways to go. Anything can happen. Price can come down there, something like that. But what I'm seeing is that this trend line could potentially hold. And if it does, then we could get price to bounce back up. Anything can happen. All right. So that's kind of the first something. And the reason I also want to mention that is I have been talking about this quite a bit. Here is a screenshot from 2008. And you can see that I also put in a trend line here. And you can see that from the low, it, we came up and then we came back down and back down and back down and up and up. And it was bouncing back and forth the entire time. But what it was mainly doing was following this lower trend line until it ran into the downtrending daily 50 and then price really rolled over. And you can see that all basically happened right at this X that we have drawn. So that is why if we go back and we kind of look at where we are currently, you know, I do have on my charts this these trend lines drawn. And I'm going to be watching this because uh, just because today rolled over, we'll have to see what CPI says and all this stuff. We could just we could just be bouncing back and forth through here. And this is what I've been saying for a few weeks at this point is I expect chop. I expect a lot of it for a long time, you know, relatively several weeks. So we're going to have to see how that happens. The other thing to be looking at, and we'll see how far this goes, but we are here now down and outside of that third ATR on the hourly chart. Uh, oftentimes price does bounce. Uh, the daily chart third ATR is definitely not in play here. So this is going to be you can see it, you know, bounced, bounced, oh, you know, bounced a little, bounced a little bit. You know, it's all relative. But the idea that we could be getting a bounce in through here, sure, why not? <laughs> like, it's possible. Uh, and so we just remember that we do have that trend line kind of in through here. So I'm watching that. We're going to see if it happens. And it will probably because be because of the CPI numbers, however they come in. We don't know. We're going to have to wait and see. Now, if we go over to the UVXY, this is the leveraged ETF of volatility. And I've been talking about this one for a little while too. And what we could see is that the that price has been moving down, but notice that the Moxie indicator has been moving up. So we are starting to see divergence, positive divergence in this case. And so this was another thing that was leading me to believe that the, the S&P, the market, was likely to move down <clears throat> rather than up. And we could see that that was starting to happen. It was a little bit close here. We got a double bottom. We actually had a trampoline move because the Moxie indicator was over zero. And uh, the UVXY likes to be tricky like this. It kind of went back down a little bit and then it finally 
went up here. And again, the MOX indicator looks pretty good. Now, again, bounces, uh, weird moves. You know, this is not a trend yet. Uh, but what I am going to be watching for is to see if the UVXY over the next few weeks actually starts to set up in the ways that I like to see it set up while the market chops sideways. If that's what happens, then we're going to we're going to actually be able to probably figure out timing pretty well as to when the market's going to roll over. And we will see that the UVXY is actually giving us a clue and insight into the the likelihood or the magnitude of the market rolling over. And so it's going to be very fascinating over the very couple of weeks, the next few weeks to see this interplay of the UVXY compared to uh, the market itself. So I'm I'm pretty excited about that to see just how this unfolds. Um, but you know, as I said, right now this is just a little bit of a move. Um, but nothing nothing is set in stone yet. We still have the hourly 50 in a downtrend. The moxie indicator still below zero, and uh, you know this is just the first little bounce or something on the UVXY. So nothing major. Just some sort of clues as to what was what's been helping me figure out that the market was likely to move down rather than up uh, on this flag. All right, so <clears throat> then we can come over to the NASDAQ. Again, everything is mostly looking the same compared to the S&P. It's just different numbers and slightly different positions. But you can see uh, the Moxie indicator was not looking good. And you can see price was starting to get rejected by the underside of a downtrending 15 minute 50. And uh, again, just started kind of rolling over. So yeah, that's that's all been pretty expected. And then for the IWM, another thing that I've been talking to the subscribers about over the last uh, couple days is notice that the IWM, you know, granted maybe had relative strength compared to the other indices, but notice how price ran right into the underside of a downtrending daily 50, right? And notice that the Moxie indicator is still below zero. So that's correct. Price should, should be finding resistance at that daily 50. The other thing looking at here, we could see that price was moving up along the hourly 50 and the hourly 50 has crossed over the hourly 200. But typically what I see is that in order to continue to move up, we need to see, we, typically we see price move down underneath the hourly 50, but above the 200, find some support in here and then it can kind of go up from there. And so uh, you know, I think it was earlier this week, I actually put an X right there on my, on my charts. And so today that is that is that is working out perfectly um, that. Yeah, so that is working out. We can see that the X totally uh, worked out where price went. And what we could see on the 15 minute time frame is notice this. This is, again, how you learn from the Moxie indicator and what it's trying to communicate to you. Notice how we had you know, price slightly higher. But notice how the Moxie indicator just dropped off like a big drop like that. That's substantial as far as negative divergences go. And then what we could see is price continued to try to move up, but notice the Moxie indicator continued to move down. So number one, kind of the magnitude, uh, the amplitude has t went down. So you know, big move up here. That means a lot of energy, big gas in the tank. And but then it came all the way back down here and very muted, very muddled down and through there, uh, despite price moving up. So those are the things of what the Moxie indicator is trying to tell you. Hey, why is price going higher, but the Moxie indicator is going lower? Oh, because it's got less energy and it's trying to tell you that this the upside uh, is probably starting to wear out. And that is that's exactly what happened in through there. And another ticker. Just to show you what I was saying about the IWM and that hourly chart, uh, another subscriber asked me about ACN earlier this week. And I said, you know, because he was bullish. And I said, because uh, he was looking at price coming into the hourly 50. And I said, um, no, <laughs> that's it's not going to be bullish. Uh, first of all, context. And again, I've seen this before that, number one, price is coming into the daily 50, coming right up into the underside of the daily 50. It's probably going to get rejected there. OK, the other thing is on the hourly chart, notice how price here had never touched the hourly 50. So there was a big gap. You know, this was an unsupported air pocket in through here. And usually when that happens, price comes down and then fails through the 50 because it has been running for so long that it outran its support so that when it finally does roll over, it carries with momentum and actually falls lower. So that's what we got there. And you can see price fell right through the hourly 50. And again, where was the X? You know, look, that's exactly the same place as the IWM. So same structure, same pattern, all that kind of stuff. And as far as the 
15 minute, it looks just like the IWM price up. Moxie went from very high to very low. And then you can see right here, price tried to push up across a downtrending 15 minute 50. The Moxie indicator was below zero. So that's an inverse trampoline move. And then from there, price just kept following the 15 minute 50 on the way down. And the Moxie indicator confirmed all of that. So uh, I'm not sure where this is going to go, but we could at least see the start in the beginning of this move to the downside. And um, yeah, there was, there was at least a trade there if you were interested in it. All right, then some of the other things that were showing me that either the market was going to weaken a little bit or just in this, this sector, hey, if you're in it, you might want to start you know, cashing in, was oil. So oil, uh, XOP, uh, a lot of the tickers I'd seen individually, oil-related names, they had good moves over the last couple of weeks. We made 40% on Gush. And I decided to cash in the last and final piece, so I think it was yesterday. And it was because it just got too stretched. I mean, this was a really great move. This was a fantastic move as price came right here into an uptrending hourly 50. The MOX indicator looked good. You can see here price held the 15 minute 50 and it was all good. We took half our position off there just because it was a big jump and you know, never know where price is going to go. But it continued to push and so we took the rest of it off up there. And so well, the way this worked out nicely for us, and why I'm saying that this I'd be careful about considering anything long from here, is we already had price running and then outside of the third ATR. Now we have, again, price outside of the third ATR. And then we have price even more outside of the third ATR on the daily chart. And this has been a huge move. It's been really a big, huge move. And so we look at that and say, hey, uh, I think this thing is starting to get very extended. And then also the other thing I talk about in relation to price and the hourly 50, kind of like what we saw about ACN, you can see that price has not touched the hourly 50 this entire time. So if this is going to move in a similar fashion to ACN, then when it does finally pull back to the hourly 50, it's probably going to have a fair amount of momentum with it to the downside and probably going to carry through and fall through the hourly 50. So if you want to deal with that, great. But I took my stuff off and we cashed in and said, okay, and then just let this thing you know, fall back down wherever it wants to go. So that's XOP. So then if we take a look at USO, uh, so itself, we can see that it was also getting extended and, and had a pretty good run, but look what it's doing. It's now really pushing outside of that third ATR and just looking very stretched, very up there. And then even on the hourly chart, same thing. This has been a really good big move, and it has not touched the hourly 50 this entire time. Therefore, that is a lot of air for price to just be up here unsupported and likely going to pull back at some point. And I think that point is about now. Uh, the other thing we've kind of been talking about the 15 minute time frame, you can see price has been moving up and the Moxie indicator has kind of fallen down. So that's some negative divergence to be looking at as well. So yeah, I'd be really careful when it comes to oil. Seems to me like things are kind of uh, wearing out. They had a good move and I think they're going to be pulling in from it. And you got to think that if US, if oil and oil, oil sector is starting to, to pull back, well, then, you know, that might be, uh, that might be what helps kind of push the market down, like what we saw today and also going forward. We're going to have to see how long it takes for all this to unwind. But oil, since it has been a large sector and a strong sector, if it does start to go away as far as strength, then there's not a whole lot holding the market up at that point. So yeah, uh, keep an eye on that. All right, then uh, UNG. UNG had a, a couple wild of day, wild days. Now I heard news that LNG, the company down in Texas, uh, uh, something at their plant blew up and they have to fix it and it's gonna take three weeks. So they're offline for three weeks or at least a significant portion of them was offline for three weeks. I think I think maybe this this jump up was maybe because of that, because um, the, if if they were going to not be producing as much, then there's going to be a constriction or reduction of supply. So price should go up. But then it's kind of a funny thing that, well, if you don't have any supply, you don't have anything to sell no matter what the price is. So that might be another way of looking at that. But either way, Yesterday, Wednesday, we got a big move down here. And I was telling, it was funny, this was happening as I was on the microphone talking to 
traders. And uh, they were asking me about UNG. And I said, no, I mean, first off, I'm, I'm, I was actually kind of surprised that we had those three days of price up like that. I was like, mm, that doesn't make any sense. There was no setup. It just jumped. And I said, I, I can't go long when there's a giant gap here between price and the AEMA and there's a giant gap here between price and the hourly 50. Like, no, can't do it. And like, as, as I was signing off and I went back one more time, about five minutes before I was wrapping up on the mic, uh, this thing really started to get hammered and go straight down. I was like, there you go. <laughs> That's why I didn't want to go long. And then this morning we opened with a, a, another gap down. Now it did get bought up. Fine. At this point, I'm really considering this to be very choppy. Uh, I, I have been looking for this to just start to chop around a little bit, and I'm looking for price and the daily 50 to meet. I don't know if it's going to hold, but I do think price and the daily 50 are going to meet. And I would imagine this now is the beginning of that happening. But if you continue to look at Moxie on the hourly chart, look what's happening. Price has been going up. The Moxie indicator has been going down. This is why I'm not trading UNG anymore and we're out of it and we we made our good money on that one. So that's UNG and then GLNG. Oops. GLNG. There we go. If I can type it right. So GLNG was a name that we were trading. We were in it and decided we got out break even because the thing just kind of fell apart. And this is probably based on the news that happened with the the LNG plant. But we had gotten in, I think, somewhere in here, and it was doing okay. It was kind of moving around. You know, I had I had my eye on it, and then sure, just you know, all of a sudden one day down like that. Okay, well, you know, that's because of the news and stuff like that. And when you get something that pretty much just breaks like that, I was like, mm, this doesn't look good. You know, it should be moving up. It couldn't. It really couldn't even get past this double top and all these other things. It just didn't look good. And so we got out break even. So got in here, got out there, break even. And then um, moving on, doesn't look doesn't look good. And you can see it continue to sink today. So it's GLNG. And then you can see LNG also suffering from that news with their plant. And you could just see um, you know, it was doing well and then just got crunched. And it's just been in a range. It can't get anywhere. The Moxie indicator is below zero. Even the 15, you can see the 15 moving up, the Moxie indicator kind of moving down. So this has just been really tough. It hasn't been doing well. Natural gas was a good strong point for a while, but the commodity was better than the companies. And uh, as I said, we're, we're just running out of places to hide on the long side. It's getting really, really difficult to find anything that is moving consistently. Heck, even on the short side, it's getting difficult to find stuff that's moving. I do think that we're going to be going down, probably going down in a big way, but it is we're just in a period of chop right now. Uh, things are probably getting settled and uh, positions placed and then we got to kind of wait for everything to unfold but that's kind of where we're at um all right so sblk speaking of fewer and fewer actually, let me come over here uh sbl okay speaking of fewer and fewer places to hide on the long side the shippers were looking okay which is kind of interesting i i didn't really expect the shippers to be hanging on as long as they did especially since we are seeing an economic slowdown I thought they were supposed to be a little bit more sensitive to that. And so I'm really surprised to see, see that they've hung on for so long. And only this week did they finally drop. Um, either way, they have been very messy. This is not stuff I like to trade, but I've been watching them. And, um, you know, it, it was a little, it was, you, you kind of, you you were getting some FOMO. I'm looking at this being like, oh, well, there were moves and they were decent and they were hanging on there. But I just don't know if I really want to participate. And, uh, you know, Hindsight's 2020, or at least now we here we are. I'm like, yeah, I'm glad I didn't, because I, either I would have had to make sure I had a good stop, or uh, it just happened very quickly. And so I, I'm glad I wasn't in there. But that's Starbulk. How about uh, EGLE? You know, Eagle Bulk. You can see the same thing. It was kind of doing well, and then just boom. So taking that escalator up and the elevator down. One th one way to look at this, uh, we could see price going up. Notice that the Moxie indicator went flat. So one way to look at it. And yeah, just got crunched. They all got crunched at the same time. DSX, same thing. It was one of the better ones, one of the stronger ones, but it, it got overbought, third ATR, big gap between price and the daily 50. And it was doing okay, but then boom, just whoosh, right over, just whoosh. So yeah, shippers, not, not a place that I want to be and glad I wasn't. And I think that that's done. So again, 
fewer and fewer, fewer places to hide. Now, another thing, uh, last week, I don't know if I shared this with you guys over here at Stock Charts, but last week, at least on my video with uh, the Moxie traders, um, I had some people asking me about uh, Alcoa Aluminum, and I said, no, <laughs> this is not bullish. First of all, this looked like garbage. I don't know what to do with it. I don't want to do anything with it. And I said, uh, the only thing holding this up is the daily 200. And I said, really, this looks like a bear flag right into the underside of a downtrending daily 50. Now, I, was like, I don't know when this is necessarily going to roll over. It's going to be tough because uh, of all that uh, back and forth, back and forth stuff. But I was like, yeah, I don't really, I think this is going to keep going down. And then I showed other examples. So that was Alcoa. And how about MATX? Again, different sectors, doesn't matter. But the pattern, the pattern is there. And you can see here that it kind of did the same thing. It was sitting on the daily 200, kind of did a little bit of a bear flag, but what it do? Right into the underside of a downtrending daily 50. And also the hourly chart. I don't want to be trading this. This is a complete mess. I can't trade that. It's too, too messy, too choppy for me. It takes too long. And I really don't want to be just sitting on something like that. But look at what happened over the last couple of days. Big crunch down. How about uh, ZIM? Now, this is one of the shippers, uh, and it looks it's a little bit funny as far as its particular pattern. But the idea that I was seeing in through here is that it came down and then you can see here another bear flag. So price was moving up like that, and then it uh, finally got crunched and you can see price up, moxie indicator down. And yeah, another one. I, I don't like this one. I didn't like how things were shaping up with it, and it um, yeah, did the... Did, the, did exactly what I was expecting from basically uh, Alcoa and Maddox. And uh, this just shows you that as they were, they came down, they were just doing bear flags up into resistance and then rolled over. So yeah, um, be careful out there. This market is very challenging, very choppy, and uh, right now probably very uh, economic news based. So you guys all take care and uh, check out the video from profitpilot.com website if you guys want to see my thoughts on the bear market. And then, um, yeah, we'll talk to you next week. Thanks, guys. Hey, guys, Dave Keller here with stockcharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.